Police have formally named the two people missing after the Fakari White Island eruption as local White Island tour guide Hayden Marshall Inman and 17-year-old Australian Winona Langford, who was travelling on the cruise ship Ovation of the Seas with her parents, Kristen and Anthony, and 19-year-old brother Jesse. It comes as an American maritime lawyer says the cruise company could be liable for millions of dollars in compensation if it or the tour company failed to properly warn sightseers of the risks. Jim Walker, who specialises in cruise law, says any injured passenger from Ovation of the Seas or the families of those killed can sue the parent company, Royal Caribbean, in a Miami court, as specified in the cruise company's terms and conditions. And that's regardless of where the accident happened or the nationality of the victims. Mr Walker says any claim of negligence will focus on what warnings sightseers to the volcano were given. We've seen the online... uh excursion description, uh, which is typically referred to uh, in the passenger ticket. Uh, There are no warnings whatsoever. There are no warnings in general, and there's no warnings unique to the White Island volcanic uh, excursion experience. So it doesn't appear to us, based upon any of the available information, that there were any warnings by the cruise line to the passengers that were taken uh, to the excursion itself. What do you make of that? Well, I I think it's unusual, quite frankly. We've seen, we've had dozens of cases against Royal Caribbean involving injuries and accidents during excursions. Typically, there's some type of warning contained in the literature. This is the first time we haven't seen any available warnings at all in the online uh, brochures that, uh, that are typically used by the cruise lines to try to get out of these types of legal issues. In your legal opinion, is that negligent? Well, it's, um, it, it appears to us that the cruise line legally clearly had a, an obligation to warn of dangers that they knew about or should have known about. We know that the New Zealand Geological Agency, uh, GeoNet, issued a warning, uh, forecast a warning of eruptive activity that was going to be uh, in the future and it turned out just six or seven days later, um, more likely than normal. That's clearly a warning. Uh, That warning should have been conveyed to the passengers by the cruise line, and we believe that if they didn't warn anyone that they took to this excursion, that that would clearly be uh, negligence. I suppose it's also about the level of warning, though, isn't it, Jim? Because obviously some of the passengers, well, all of the passengers were in the care of the tour company when they were on the island, and they would have signed other paperwork as well. So they would have been provided with other material. And it is clearly stated it's, it's an active volcano. True, but you have to remember... The, the cruise line itself typically sells the excursions like this even before the cruise starts. So you go online, you book your cruise, you pick your excursions. What information was available to the passengers after they had paid the money to the cruise line? Well, was there any warning given to them for them to consider the nature of the risk before they were committed to going on the cruise? Uh, in most circumstances like this, it doesn't appear that there were any warnings given. So perhaps the tour operator later gave them uh, some type of warning, some type of paperwork after the cruise had already started and after they were already committed to going on the excursion. That's a little too little too late in our view. So I don't think that that's an effective warning as far as the timing goes. Do you accept that adventure tourism has some kind of inherent risk that should be reasonably obvious? Well, it, the, the, the question here is, you know, many, many people come back and say this is an act of God. Th- this is clearly not an act of God. An act of God is a completely unforeseeable situation, a lightning bolt down from, from, the, from the heavens, so to speak. But this was, a, uh, this was a issue that scientists had looked into where they were issuing warnings that were inc- not only accurate but seemed to be make it entirely foreseeable. So it appears to us to be a perfect situation where they have to give meaningful warnings to passengers who are not familiar with this volcano before they were taken to it. 
Jim, have you been in contact with any of the families involved? We have been contacted by one uh, U.S. family uh, who lost a loved one during uh, during this particular uh, volcanic eruption. Uh, we're not going to be revealing that family's name. We don't have their permission to do so. But they ask us to conduct an investigation uh, into the liability of the cruise line, and, and we're in the process of doing that. And what remedies are available to them? Well, um, the, the thing about the United States legal system, unlike that of New Zealand, is the U.S. legal system has a full range of damages and remedies available to injured passengers. So passengers are entitled not only to financial compensation by way of lost wages and diminishment of earning capacity for those people who are going to be unable to work, uh, but uh, the, 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 the payment of their medical expenses. And then in addition to all of that, uh, emotional damages for mental anguish, damages for pain and suffering, uh, both in the past and in the future. Many of these families have lost loved ones and will have to endure that grief and bereavement for a long period of time, unfortunately. And then there are people uh, who are still suffering physically and will need medical treatment in the future. Our, our U.S. legal system is uniquely designed to, to fully compensate families that have suffered a loss through the negligence of a major corporation like this. I know nothing compensates a person for, for, that, for disfigurement and being disabled and for families who have lost loved ones, but potentially are you talking about millions of dollars here? Well, we have handled, uh, as I mentioned earlier, several dozen um, cases against Royal Caribbean and against many other cruise lines based here in Miami, Florida. Uh, typically, uh, when the cruise line compensates our clients, they require our clients and require our law firm to execute confidentiality orders called gag orders, where we're not able to talk about the details of prior settlements and prior cases. I can say generally that we've reached settlements against Royal Caribbean in the past involving shore excursion cases in the range of several hundred thousands of dollars to, to many millions of dollars in general. Uh, now, what these families have suffered on this particular excursion seems to be quite extreme and the, the damage potentially could be uh, larger than the, these figures that I mentioned. There's also the issue of whether punitive damages uh, could likely be awarded. Um, my initial assessment uh, of the conduct of Royal Caribbean is they appear not only to be negligent, but they seem to have been rather reckless in sending people to this particular crater uh, where a active volcano was going to have eruptive activity more likely than normal without any escape plan. And if there were no warnings whatsoever, that could uh, expose Royal Caribbean to punitive damages. This is a corporation, you've got to keep in mind, that uh, sails their passengers to over 300 cruise ports around the world. Uh, and they have many thousands on, upon thousands, as many as 4,500 shore excursions that they operate and advertise to their passengers. They collect literally over billions of dollars uh, to their, uh, uh, to, sorry, I've got my phone ringing. Uh, they've got um, a, a great deal of impetus to push these excursions and to sell these excursions. Um, they have a legal obligation, as I mentioned earlier, to vet the excursions. How on earth can they vet as many as 4,500 excursions. I think uh, they don't do that. They don't devote the necessary resources to really vetting these excursions, double checking them, looking at their safety records, making certain they have safe procedures and policies uh, in such that they're in a position to really understand the nature of the risk so they can convey that risk to the passengers. Um, so. Punitive damages could be an issue that we're exploring as well. Have you been in touch with any New Zealand authorities during the course of your investigation so far? Uh, we have not. We've reached out to GeoNet and there are some other things that we're doing, but we have not been in communication with, any, with anyone from New Zealand uh, or Australia yet. What about Royal Caribbean? What communication have you had with them? 
We have had no communications with Royal Caribbean at this time until we make a decision with our client's approval that we're going to be proceeding with the claim. The thing about Royal Caribbean is they will provide no meaningful information to us. Uh, they are an organization that if you want information, you have to put them in a court of law. You have to get rulings from the court. They're not going to cooperate. They're not going to play nice. Uh, they have been remarkably and unusually quiet uh, from what we've seen so far this past week. Um, they, have, they have not made use of their corporate communications. They have not even acknowledged that this was a cruise-sponsored excursion. They haven't identified, although we're aware of the local tour operator, they haven't gone on record of saying this is uh, the responsibility of the local tour operator. Uh, they're just simply being quiet. And that is American maritime lawyer Jim Walker. And so far, Royal Caribbean has refused Checkpoint's invitations to do an interview.